In this module, we will continue discussing measurement scales. In the previous module, we talked about the measurement scales for qualitative variables. In the current module, we will talk about the measurement scale for quantitative variables. The first measurement scale for quantitative variable is an interval scale. The interval scale, unlike nominal and ordinal scale, is a truly quantitative scale. It does contain the characteristics of both nominal and ordinal scales. Moreover, it also satisfies the third property of a measurement, which is equal intervals. In an interval scale, there is an arbitrary zero point. And whenever we say arbitrary zero point, we actually mean that if by any chance a value of a the value of a variable goes to zero, it doesn't mean that it, it is actual zero. Because in, in, a com in a common language, in a common understanding, whenever something goes to zero, we say it, it's, it's, it's real zero, that it's not there. But in an interval scale, when a variable goes to zero, it does not represent the total absence. Something still exists at zero. That's why it's an arbitrary zero. Let's take a few examples, like in temperature. Whenever the temperature goes to zero degree Celsius, this does not mean that the heat is no more. Heat is still there. It's just we can't feel it that way. When we talk about IQ of a person, having a zero IQ does not mean a person doesn't have a brain or a person cannot think. Having a zero IQ does mean that a person can think, but it's just not measured on a scale we are trying to measure at. Sometimes attitude scales, like hopeful, willing to endure, so on until hopeless. These are liquid kind of scales, which are also interval scales. The last type of measurement scale is a ratio scale, which is the highest level of measurement. It is the most informative measurement scale. It's characterized by the fact that equality of ratios as well as e equality of intervals may be determined. Fundamental to the ratio scale is the presence of true zero point. Unlike interval scale where we have arbitrary zero point, in ratio scale, whenever a value turn out, turn, turns out to be zero, it means total absence. Ratio scale satisfies all the four properties of, a, of any measurement, which includes identity, magnitude, equal intervals, and a minimum value. Moreover, one can use all the mathematical operations on a variable that's measured on a ratio scale. Few examples of a ratio scale includes heart rate of a normal person, that is 60 to 100, beats per minute. Having a heart rate of zero actually means that person is no more. Similar way, in the case of tumor cells in a cancer patient, whenever number of tumor cells goes to zero, it actually means a person doesn't have a tumor, which reflects the total absence. Likewise, height of a person or the weight of a person, as soon as it goes to zero, it actually means the person is not here. It's no more. It's not there. It refers to the total absence. All these variables are measured on a ratio scale. We already talked about that how we convert a quantitative variable into a qualitative variable. Similar way, if we can make such conversion, our measurement scale also changes. That if a quantitative variable is either measured on a ratio or interval scale, it can be converted into a qualitative variable. And when such conversions happen, the variable turn out to be ordinal. Let's talk about this example, that how in one situation, the way we measure change the scale of measurement. Like in a marathon, if three runners are running, if we talk about, at the finish line, we talk about the numbers of each marathoner 
or each runner, the number assigned to these runners are going to be nominal. Having a number 7, 8 or 3 does not necessarily mean that the person who is getting 3 is the fastest. It's just the name. If we talk about the rank order of the winners at the finish line, over there, first place, second place or the third place, it is very obvious that a person who is getting at the first place has won. He has ran the faster than the second person or the third person. In such situations, when there is rank ordering, we call such level of measurement as an ordinal. The third one is interval. When we measure a variable on the performance rating, it could be 8.2, 9.1, 9.6. Over here, the interval represents some intervals from 9.1, 9.6, and 8.2. That if a person ran scales at 9.6, it means that person has a highest scale as compared to 9.1 and 8.2. And lastly, it's time to finish in. It's a ratio. From here, we can clearly see that 15.2 minutes is definitely higher than the time to finish that is 14.1 or 13.4. Over here, one thing that we need to take care of that if in an ordinal scale we have third place or second place or first place these intervals these gaps between these values does not necessarily have to have equal intervals the difference between the first place and second place should not necessarily have to be the same as the second and third but in the ratio scale we can clearly see that if a person has ran faster, the person arrived at 13.4 minutes, which is definitely higher than 14.1 and 15.2. This is a quick rundown of the different measurement scales. There are four nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal variables are classified with no ordering, like color of hair, color of eye, or gender. Ordinal variables are ranked, ordered. They are still classified. It could be tumor grade or cancer stages. Meaningful difference between values could be temperature and IQ, which is interval. And the meaningful zero point and ratio between values it is a ratio scale, which could be height, cell counts, or weights. While performing statistical analysis, we definitely define our variables according to the type and the scale they've been measured. We have a different statistical methodologies for each different type of variable and each different measurement scale of variable.